So you can go for things like, you know, noodle soups, for example. Um, you leave the soup behind. Um, right. Those would help to cut down on... Wait, wait, like, wait. Say again, go for a bowl of noodle soup, but you leave the soup behind. Yes. So you just have... The noodles <laughs> and the ingredients. <laughs> it helps. Right. Habits, almost minimum 21 to 28 days to change a habit. And, Change uh, a habit, or you mean to to let my taste buds taste buds also yes. So refreshed. you have to slowly cut down, or some oh. of them will go cold turkey. But I've seen that doesn't work in few people. They again go back. Hi everyone, it's Stephen here, and welcome back to another invigorating discussion. I know for sure because we're actually going to be talking about food, a, a very favorite subject. Now, Singapore is truly a melting pot of delectable, delicious, and decadent food. Unfortunately, it seems like the more tasty it is, often the more unhealthy it is too. And we can't seem to get enough of it. We have uh, results from the latest National Nutrition Survey supporting this. It shows that our daily calorie intake is up. Take salt, for instance. 9 in 10 of us exceeded the daily recommended amounts. In fact, yeah, every day we're exceeding it. And there's also uh, uh, obesity and hypertension. They're also on the rise, affecting more of us. So today on Heart of the Matter, we question our food choices. Has all this uh, decadent eating come at a price? How can we turn things around? How can we enjoy our food with, without having it make us unhealthy? With me in studio today, I have uh, Dr. Kalpada Baskaran, President of the Singapore Nutrition and Dietics Association. Hello. Candy Go, clinical dietitian at Parkway MediCenter. Hello, everyone. And Terence Go, a father who lost 35 kg in eight months because he wanted to be a good role model for his then newborn son. Hi, everyone. Happy to be here. Okay, welcome, everyone. I'm going to start with the uh, nutrition experts because I think it's safe to say that we we all eat too much, way too much, especially rich food. The, the better it tastes, the more we eat of it. Yet it's a, a real struggle for most of us to change our diets. Why is that the case? Maybe I think uh, you all, we all know, right, in Singapore, food is available 24-7. Even on the way to work, when you go to MRT, both sides <laughs> of the aisles, you have shops wherein you are tempted. So this is where the mind, uh, mindless eating concept comes in. Uh, so you are forced because of the surrounding to make mm. choices. So I feel that may be one of the reasons. Also, now we have 24-hour food courts yep. and people working longer hours, the rapid urbanization. So actually, it's a long list of things I can say okay. why we are forced to make those choices. Yeah, and, and it seems that switching to healthier versions of food can be a very challenging task. I mean, like using whole grains, you know, eating more wholemeal bread. In fact, less than 5% of us have this in our diets. Uh, I, I guess some would argue it just doesn't taste the same. Like having brown chicken rice, you know, people will say, no la, not shook. <laughs> Candy, I mean, do you get your, your, your patients coming to you and your clients saying, it's very hard to switch. Yes, I, I do get quite a number of them coming to me saying that, you know, switching to whole grains is really not practical, especially if they eat out a lot. Um, so I do like um, encourage them more of, um, if let's say you do eat out quite a bit, the times where you are eating at home, you can make that choice and make that swap as well. Um, for example, like let's say brown rice, you really don't like the taste of it. You can do a mm. mixture of it. If let's say you really don't like wholemeal bread, you can also go for say high fiber white bread. So th those are good alternatives that gives you the fiber without compromising the taste as well. Okay, so you don't have to jump all the way to the super healthy version yet. In fact, I do that. I mix brown rice with white rice at home just you know, so you get a bit of the texture that you still like. But Terence, you know, um, I've got to say your story is, is quite interesting. You know, in, in about eight months, you lost 35 kg. Yes, that's right. Yeah, I mean, okay, give us some indication. Were, were you overweight to begin with? Yeah, I was 105 kg. Okay. So I've been struggling with weight loss for almost close to 10 years. I have been kind of stress eating right. and leading uh, an inactive lifestyle, I would say. Okay, yeah. and, and then you're saying when your, your wife got pregnant, you decided time to do something about it. Yeah, so, so I wanted to get healthy and active for my son, to be a role model for my son. So that's when I get started. Uh, to I started by educating myself on nutrition and cutting on processed food. 
Okay, so, so give us some idea because you look super fit now, I have to admit, you know, uh, and when you started on this journey, what, what did you do? I mean, because to lose it in eight months as well is, is quite fast. Yes. So in the first month, I only exercised once per week. I, okay. I, I didn't change my diet except uh, removing supper. I used to love supper, McDonald's at night. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. So in the second month, I start to get serious about it. So that's when I increase my exercise frequency to mm. three times a week. And I started implementing a healthy diet by removing processed food. Right. Also, so I, anything processed you would not eat. Yes, my favorite was fried chickens. Right. All the fast food restaurants, you name it, I love it. Okay. So I started removing that. I felt the, the change in my body somehow. Okay. I felt more energetic. I, I had more quality sleep. Right. Mm, it's just I, that your wife had to work harder cooking more often because you were eating yes. a little more. <laughs> yes. Okay. But it, it's turned out well and you've been able to keep that weight off. Okay. For keep that. Yeah. For the first seven months, my diet was very strict. Um, subsequently, I changed it to something that is more sustainable. 70% of the time, I eat as clean as possible. Okay. And thirty percent of the time, I eat whatever I want. So at ah. least there's a balance to it. So it's a bit of a seventy thirty rule yes. going on there. Okay, well, Terence, your your story is really quite amazing. But you know, uh, um, many people have been in your situation, wanting to do something, but f struggle with that. Uh, in fact, uh, you know, we we have a, a clip we want to share with you from Singapore's Health Minister Ong Yi Kang, who reminded us that you know we truly are what we eat. Let's listen to this. Chronic diseases like diabetes, hypertension, high blood cholesterol are consequences of our lifestyles, especially eating habits. We are what we eat. Food can be medicine if we eat well, but it can be poison if we do not eat well. So, Kalpana, that's, that's a pretty stark statement. I mean, it's basically calling food a medicine, but on the other extreme is a poison. Um, it lends an interesting perspective to how we see food, right? Do people really think of food that way, you know? Um, yeah, definitely. I always think, you know, you are what you eat. And especially, I'll give an example. Okay, you can eat, uh, let's say, just take the humble potato. Yeah. Okay, you just eat boiled potatoes. Mm. But there is an alternative to it. Maybe you want to have a mashed potato. Okay, you may think, okay, mashed potato is healthy. But actually, as soon as you eat it, it is ultra processed. As Terence mentioned, it is ultra processed. So as you eat it, your sugar level shoots up. Oh. And then your insulin shoots up, you store fat. And that leads to insulin resistance and, of course, pre-diabetes. So it spirals down, right? So And also, I may convert these potatoes into potato chips. Then what happens is mm. frying also leads to uh, the addition of acrylamides come in and then salt, sodium content goes high. Oh, wow. So it's not so much the food itself, but almost the, the process, the, the method processing, of cooking, The method right? of cooking, yes. Yeah. So if we were to look at this, some of these foods as a poison, actually that can also be a good thing. I'm, th I'm thinking because then it would mean I won't eat it, right? Uh, yeah, but maybe um, poison is what it means is it's like indirectly it's unhealthy. Okay. Because it's not going to kill you immediately because poison, right. Right, but it might... Uh, like like help you on the pathway to chronic diseases which eventually will lead to complications and of course your mortality rate will be higher right so okay so far we've not really talked about anything entirely new all of us really know this you know it's, it's pretty much common sense but it's so hard to do because food sparks so much joy in us yes. right and so much yeah. joy from eating and, and these days a few taps on my phone in 20 minutes yeah. i have hot roti prata at my door you know um and everywhere I yep. go, as you mentioned, it's readily available. So how do we make this healthier option more accessible to people? And let's talk especially families, because mm. it's so cheap, it's so convenient to buy food that is generally unhealthy. Yeah. Because I feel the main rule we should follow is the consistency. And as a family, when you, when you do something, it is also brings joy. In fact, it's... Um, uh, it's something you're putting together as a family. Mm -hmm. And as Terence mentioned, you know, it is for the whole good of the family. So starting from planning, planning is very important. So when you plan a meal, so what am I going to do for the entire week? So plan as a family. In, in that planning, you also include what choices your family members like. Right. And again, when you go for marketing, choose healthier choice products. So because even the products you choose, 
you can choose fresh tomatoes or i can also go for canned ones mm. so there is a choice okay. there so go for healthy choice products then when it comes to cooking i feel involve family members in cooking never underestimate a, a three year old you know right i i i remember i introduced um cooking to my son when he was 1 plus oh really i'll make him sit next to me i uh like whenever i'm cooking you know just in a high chair I so see. that's how you know you also introduce the different types of foods and so get involved everyone this also creates a s- strong sense of family bonding right so i always believe the entire family eats healthy stays healthy i mean cooking i enjoy cooking and i find it can be therapeutic when i have time yeah but in you know singapore where we work long hours and people are rushing yes. home to feed the family and maybe candy you can touch on this also your clients are going to say we got time <laughs> right i mean and the coffee shop is below it cost me $3.50 to get a packet of noodles yeah you are absolutely right so a lot of people will say like you know no lack of time or they think healthy food is expensive but actually eating out in hawker centers right can have healthier options as well so you can go for things like you know noodle soups for example um you leave the soup behind um right. those would help to cut down on wait, wait, like wait wait say again go for a bowl of noodle soup but you leave the soup behind yes. so you just have the noodles <laughs> and the ingredients <laughs> it helps okay. so because the so, uh, the soup would have quite a bit of sodium in it so by leaving that behind you cut down on the sodium Okay. Yeah. And um for example, you can go for like stir fries, roasted or grilled kind of like dishes and that would have um lesser uh, oil in it as well. Right. So so, so essentially you're saying choose dishes that could be a bit better have what? I uh, mean maybe give us some tips. So we're saying less oil, less less salt, less gravy. Okay. Yeah. So that also means less taste. Yeah, so um the alternative to it is to go for things that give you flavor without um adding too much salt and oil in it. So things like you know natural flavors like the onion, garlic, uh mm. cut chilies and all that, um that will give you the flavor without compromising too much on the taste. But I can still eat my hawker food every day? Um I would say yes. So to me food is not a all or nothing kind of thing. It's about how often you consume. So um just now we talked about how food can be poison, mm. but it's the amount that you co- that you consume matters. So for example, if let's say you know you're only having like fried chicken once in a month or like okay. a less healthy option once in a month, that's okay. It's not going to throw you off your enti- throw your health entirely right. off. Right. Yeah. Unless you're eating it every day. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I tried that for 2 weeks. It wasn't the the, <laughs> the best thing to do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, but Terence, what about you? I mean, so now when you have a meal, how clean is your meal? Okay, so if I had a meal at home, it would be clean. So usually it would be steam fish. Okay. Uh, lean meats lah, I would say. If I'm eating chicken thigh, then it would be skinless. Right. And stir fry vegetables and brown rice usually. Wow. Okay. Okay, but um, as you know, when we dine out, there's limited choices. When also, I'm having when I'm having meals with my family or friends, I don't really um st- stick that strictly to to eating clean. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but most of the time, I try my best to do so. And and is your son also you know now is a few years old right? Uh, He's two years old. He's two years old. So mm. I imagine he will start actually mimicking you to a certain extent because whatever yes. you eat is what he eats too, right? Yes. Now that me, my wife and I, we are aware of nutrition, we try our best to give him, make sure that every meal is as nutritional as possible. But again, some would mm. argue that's a luxury to be able to cook at home, you know, and and prepare. To steam fish takes time, you know. Uh, so, um. I just want to raise our attention to some uh, because HPB did a, a food composition analysis recently, and for many of us who are, are not tracking it, like I love my mee goreng, you know, um, mm. it used to contain uh, it says that a thousand nine hundred forty six milligrams of sodium back in about twenty ten, and now it has three thousand eight hundred and fifty four milligrams. Okay, that's a ninety eight percent increase in about ten to twelve years. Seafood Ho Fun, 37% more sodium today compared to, again, about 10-12 years ago. So overall, this study showed that most of our dishes, the sodium level has gone up by an average of 20%. Why is this happening? Why, why is all our food getting more salty? Maybe I feel over the years, you know, maybe our taste perception also has changed. See, it's like something like creeping calories. Without our knowledge, we have been... increasing the salt and we have used to that taste in fact until this results came we were definitely not aware that we yes. have been eating so much of sodium it is 2000 mg per day but if, if, let's say i go and eat my hofen it's almost double dose 
Mm. just for one meal exactly so this is what we have been consuming and you can see because of that the hypertension rates have gone up so you're so, saying our, our taste buds have adjusted yes, to it, it has, and now we need more yeah. salt to make it taste even yes taste correct. good again yeah that's the reason why healthy eating should start from young yes young as possible so it will be within your dna you know no, you but know, you can yeah. be eating healthy but then the moment you try something really tasty because there's more of salt course, you'll be yes. like wow I want yeah. more of this definitely you'll want more of it that's where you have to uh, bring in your behavioral change so it takes time right. habits almost minimum 21 to 28 days to change a habit and change uh, a habit or you mean to, to let my taste buds taste buds also yes so refreshed. you have to slowly cut down or some oh. of them will go cold turkey but I've seen that doesn't work in few people they again go back so right. you try to adjust it and you really need to be consistent and you are, you need to have a like family support or a buddy you know who okay. also encourages you to eat healthy so so what you're saying is we need to sort of start eating dishes that have less and e- less yes. salt so we keep moving the moving, needle down yes that's the reason why for some if you completely remove sodium it's not going to work yeah. so you go for uh, uh, sodium alternatives like potassium based salt okay. they naturally taste less salty right so you get used to it and then uh, try to add natural herbs and spices okay it will work but this is so much hard work it's I, I and, think and I'm thinking I just want to buy from the hawker uh, you know and I can't tell him uncle please uh, make sure there's every day less salt okay tomorrow I want 10% less salt but <laughs> see what we do is what I do is uh, when he makes fried rice, I'll, I'll add, add him to uh, ask him to add less salt okay. and no sauces, even the soy sauce he adds. Mm. Uh, so they will be able to do it, especially, you know, when there is a demand, definitely can be done. I somehow feel nothing is impossible. He needs to have a whole bunch of customers that are like Terrence who go to him and say, yes, less oil, less salt, less everything, right? You know, and yet be willing to pay the same price for it. Candy, uh, how, how realistic is this again? I mean, because we're all struggling with it. Uh, how, how challenging will it be for us to, to lower our salt intake? Yeah, so like um, she rightly pointed out, it takes time to cut down. So it's about retraining our taste buds. Yeah, so take a stepwise approach. And um, more importantly is don't give up. You know, because sometimes when f- you cut down a little bit on taste, you feel that it doesn't taste as good. But right. if you keep taking it over a period of time, it becomes your new like normal Okay. So that you'll be able to accept it better. Actually, how did that work for you, Terence? When you stop eating fried chicken, have you have you now when you go back to fried chicken, do you like, <gasps> wow? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I still indulge in fried chicken once in a while, but for the first seven months of my weight loss process, I hadn't had any fried chicken. And you didn't miss it. I missed it so much. Yeah. But um, <laughs> at a certain point of time, I got used to it. Just like the sodium intake that you guys mentioned, initially I wasn't used to it, but after so many months, uh, I got accustomed to ha- to have little to no salt in my food. Okay. That when I tasted salty food, it was overwhelming. It was like, wow, so salty. But to others, mm. they feel that it's normal. Yeah. So now, now it's the opposite for you. When you go out and eat, everything will taste too salty or too rich in flavor. Which... Yeah, that's, that's right. So for now, it's okay. Why? Because uh, as I mentioned, I need a diet that's sustainable. Yeah. So... For me, is I do constantly have an awareness of what I'm putting into my mouth. If I feel that I'm indulging too much into salty food and processed food, then I will remind myself. At the same time, because I also do work out and sweat it out. Okay. So it's not too bad for me if I put in too much sodium okay. into my body. But but you, it's clear mm. that you have uh, made this a very conscious part of your day, your routine, you know, as part of your yes. lifestyle as well. Uh, calorie intake is also on the rise. I mean, I mean, uh, what 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 are we doing that is again causing us to have this increase, Candy? Yeah, I think um, especially in the local context, a lot of Singaporeans are foodies. Yeah. And we born over food, you know. So um, on weekends, especially, you know, people go out and like check out new restaurants and all that. So that's when calories can pile up because um, the food options generally are not so healthy. And mm-hmm. you know, like in gatherings, you tend to over order. Yeah. And then after a meal, you could have like dessert and then you have drinks after that. So it quickly adds up. Yeah, so I think people need to be more conscious about like the portion that they consume. Then that will help to manage the calorie intake. 
I, I blame our culture. I mean, yeah, because we always feel that you've got to have some leftover. You can't have empty plates. It doesn't look good, right? But I remember going to visit a friend in the US once and we had a barbecue after like church and then uh, we went and said, okay, we're having hot dogs. I was like, great. There were six of us. There were six hot dogs. <laughs> I was like, oh, I guess I just can only have one. <laughs> You know, but in a way, it made sense. And as a result, you, you don't overeat. You know, you have some salad. And after a while, you wait. And the hunger will pass, you know. Uh, but that's something we're, we're definitely not accustomed to. Um, what if I'm someone like Terence, working out three, maybe even five times a week? Can I eat anything I want? Um, I would say <laughs> no, because you, you really cannot uh, exercise I'll exercise a bad diet. Okay. So when we talk about you uh, know like trying to manage your health, manage your weight, right? Um, diet plays eighty percent. Twenty percent comes from the exercise. So eventually, like you still need to work on improving your diet quality. Yeah. Okay. So so even if I eat, work out a lot, I can't eat a lot of junk food because it doesn't it doesn't burn off in that yeah, sense, right? Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah. Okay, so, so let's talk dollars and cents because at the end of the day, you know, healthy eating healthy seems to cost more in Singapore. Would you say that's true? Not really. Because uh, uh, when you look at over the years, the brown rice cost is now equivalent to white rice. Mm. And even uh, when you look at the wholemeal bread and white bread, not much of a difference. Some of, it also depends on the brands. So to me, you also choose brands which are a little bit less expensive. Okay. And vegetables, of course, are healthy. That's not a, like, mm. you know, you can have a veg vegetables, you can buy fruits to me and all your healthier choice ingredients are there. So it's depending on what you want to choose and how do you choose it. Okay. And I personally believe, no, that cannot be a reason that because it's healthy, I sorry, it's expensive, I'm not able to follow a healthy di uh, lifestyle. But having said that, when you look at uh, some of the instant or the uh, processed foods like instant noodles, mm. they are way cheaper. Yeah. Yes. So there are some items like that. So maybe people tend to uh, buy that often. So right. uh, that's also, again, this boils down to the choice they make. Did you see, Terence, your, your sort of uh, regular food bill go up in any way after you guys change your diet? Would okay. you say it's it's more expensive? I mean, ten percent well, more expensive, even just a little to, bit. To be frank, uh, if uh, for the first seven months when I was eating clean, the food choices out there, if I want healthy food, it's gonna probably gonna cost more. Okay. Like example, like you know, there's a fast food. I mean, there's a healthy food fast food chain. Okay. That serves sandwiches. You know, right? It's so, like an oxymoron. Healthy fast food. I'm sorry. <laughs> just, <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> So for the for a foot long, it probably costs more than ten dollars. Right. I, for any salad stall, it's gonna cost minimum eight eight to nine bucks. Okay. For something that is healthy, so to me, um, initially that was uh, definitely there was a uh, inflation, there was an increase in the bill, the food bill. Okay. Yeah. But now, would you say you found a way to? Not really, but uh, I. Oh, just, not really. I so it's still <laughs> expensive. You still it's still expensive. Uh, okay. Because. I like to eat fish. Yes. I, I just buy it at the market. And fish is generally more expensive than fish chicken, for instance. Fish is new, it's, um, low in fat, high in protein. Yeah. So it's the best choice for me. And of course, chicken breast, but I don't really eat it now. Okay. okay. So I would say, I would just remind myself la, that the price is high, but the cost of being unhealthy is even higher. Mm. So, so in a way, you are, I guess you are prioritizing how you spend your money and where you, you, you manage your, your finances and your resources. Yes. But this is a constant struggle. I mean, Candy, how, how can we make this a more um, a sustainable part of our, our lifestyle? Because as we've heard, it does add up. It does end up costing at least a little bit more. Um, it can, but I also feel that you know, it really boils down to um, the awareness as well because you know people always think like you know, if you want to eat healthy I have to eat salad but mm. you can also eat healthy if let's say you go and eat uh, economic rice you can oh, have wow. so you can have like a plain rice you right. can have two stir fry vegetables and then you choose a lean meat option so it can be like a steamed fish or like a stir okay. fried meat but normally it's like drowned in so much gravy and sauce and uh, you know that's when you need to ask them to like um, Give me that off. really dry looking piece of meat that's sitting on the corner of the yeah. tree. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, also that that helps. Um, in that way, like, you know, if you eat like an economy plate of rice, right, that could cost you maybe $5. And that is yeah. not that expensive compared to like a salad bowl. 
Yeah. Actually, while I have you all here, also let me help, help us dispel some of the, the myths. Because like you said, we all think eating a salad is healthy. But actually, if I have salad with a whole bunch of dressing, then... It's, it is actually no point eating that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, and, it, and of course, salad, um, uh, I know all the salad lovers will hate me. Uh, you look at the bed of lettuce, it's the cheapest vegetable you can find. Mm. So half your salad bowl is filled with lettuce and lettuce has not much of nutrients, just a little bit of dietary fiber, Okay. nothing much. So I always feel, as uh, Candy said, you know, rather you choose your stir-fried vegetables or you make yourself oh. stir-fried vegetables or even you can just buy a pack of cherry tomatoes and a cucumber, just eat into it. And that's better than the green Better than, vegetables. yes, of course. And and uh, as you said, if you add all your salad dressings, right, and and sometimes they also add cold cut meats. Ah, in, uh, okay. So this again adds sodium. And uh, so that's why I feel salad is also sitting in a disguised form as healthy. It need, exactly. It's not always healthy. You, you feel like you're eating healthy, but yeah. actually you may not. Right? Yeah. Yeah, so I also feel like because salad, sometimes they are not very nutritionally balanced as well. Mm. Because, you know, in terms of like my healthy plate, we will still want like, you know, half a plate of fruits mm. and vegetables, a quarter plate of protein. You still need right. a quarter plate of carbohydrate as well. Ah, so okay. when you don't have that carbohydrate, people tend to um, get hungry very quickly. Um, they may overeat later on because they don't have that energy from that carbohydrate from that meal as well. Okay, okay. Yeah. And I always add bacon bits to my salad, so <laughs> <laughs> we know that's not so great. Uh, another one, uh, like like let's say a hamburger. Is that really that bad for us? Uh, it depends on what is in the hamburger as well. So like, you know, if you go to a certain uh, fast food chain that may be like grilled like chicken option, mm -hmm. that would be a healthier one. Okay. Mm. But it's also about the sauce, I guess, I imagine, in, in the burger, right? Yes. That, that really is the, the most unhealthy part. Um, any other commonly eaten dishes that we, we should just dispel? Because very often we think all the, the char kway teow, hokkien meat, everything is just really bad. Is that true? Is there any way we can um, see those as being... You can't tell it's really bad because, again, that's some of the Singaporean dishes. Yeah. Which I, I feel, I, even I love it, but I always believe in this concept of uh, quality, quantity, frequency. So uh -huh. try to uh, choose quality foods and also control your portions, uh, portion sizes, which is the quantity. And if you really love certain foods, then decide on the frequency. Right. So these foods can be like chakwe teow, can be once in a while foods. Okay. Whereas your everyday foods can be the other healthier options. Uh, so you, when you follow this, I think you also don't crave for such foods. Sometimes too much of craving, you go back, you know. Again, mm. you go back to your world. So I feel you should not let that craving happen. I always believe there should be a variety in your meal as well. So okay. no need to cut down. And I don't want to use the word healthy at all because it should just be a normal meal because people say when they see this word healthy, mm. they think, okay, it's not tasty. So that's what... Uh, but to get there, yeah. it sounds like a bit of a journey. We need to yeah, get our it, taste buds yes, adjusted so that yes. it's not on such a... I don't know, high sodium frequency, mm. we need to bring it down bring it so down, that yes. you know we will enjoy more foods overall. We know, we always hear the saying, moderation is key, but easier said than done, right? And give us an example of how we can go about dealing with these daily challenges, walking past the bread shop at the MRT station, which is then followed by a bubble tea shop, which is then followed by another dessert shop, mm. you know? And yeah, any last tips? For me, I think that... Um the main thing is to start small. Um, try and avoid doing like a whole overhaul to your diet because that can be very overwhelming. Okay. So start small. Identify a few things that you want to change first. Once you're able to do that, then you can move on to make more changes. In that way, it's easier to stick to the changes that you make. And overall, you will have improved from where you started out. Yeah. Yeah, maybe be follow a consistent way of eating. In fact, uh, don't skip your meals. Mm. Timeliness of eating is very important. And also, uh, don't go for any crash diets. Ah. So it should be, it, whatever you're eating also should stick, uh, like uh, fit into your, your daily schedule. And if you are, like, once in a while you eat unhealthy foods, so it's okay. Right. Don't worry about it. And uh, many people think uh, eating healthy is very tough. Mm -hmm. But once you are into it, actually you will enjoy it. Right. Because you reap more benefits. Okay. And Terence can, can attest to that. Yeah, I feel that there's really no good food and bad food. It's just okay. really about balance. So for me, how I help myself is I actually have some apps to help me. 
Ah, ah okay. that could possibly integrate into your lifestyle better and it's engaging interactive lah. Namely, there was there is an app that called Lumi Health by the HPB. It actually encourages us to be more active and reminds us of our sodium intake and um, diets. Right. Yeah, I also use some sort of calorie tracker app. Yeah. So that I'm I'm just make sure that I'm on track on my calories lah. I do not overeat. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but I think you all have raised a good point. I mean, make it a part of your lifestyle, not something you you not a chore, not something mm. you have mm. to do. You know, I mean, like I give you a simple example from all my food eating experiments. I've realized that sugar is a big culprit in many of our foods, just like mm. sodium. So I do make a conscious effort to not take things that have sugar, sweet drinks, or I mean, I like my coffee black without sugar or milk. Anyways, I think if you are a little bit vain, it helps too because then you are self conscious and you want to stay <laughs> looking does, good. Yeah. Like I, I'm sure, Taryn, look at this. Uh, for those of you who are listening in you you should watch the youtube video and you can see how terence i can't imagine him being over 100 kg at one point in time so there is definitely something uh, a bit of a incentive you need to give yourself and reward yourself all right folks well uh, you've heard us talk about this you know it is a difficult journey and we know that you know it sounds like a very arduous task but as you've heard from my guest today if you just uh, enjoy the process and find a way to you know you can still have healthy but tasty food it doesn't have to be either or Thanks for listening in. If you have any uh, you know, feedback or any stories about food that you'd like to share with us, drop us a comment on Spotify or Apple or if you see us watching this on YouTube as well. I'm Stephen Chair. I'll see you next week. Bye for now.